One of the issues with delineated files is that they are not necessarily standardized and you see quite a bit of variation in the format of them. So the read CSV file has some options that allow you to designate the features of the particular CSV file that you're using. For example, some CSV files have a header row, which means that the first line of the text in the file indicates that the table headers. In other cases, there are no header rows. So the default value is that there is a header row, but you can set the header parameter to false if it turns out that there is no header row in your file. Also, if the separator is not a comma, you can uh, specify a different delineator. For example, some files use vertical lines or pipes to separate things. In cases where it is a tab separated values file, there's no easy way to write a tab. So there's actually an escape symbol for tab, which is backslash T. And that's what you use for the separator value for tab separated uh, files. Some of the data frames that we have been using have been very tiny, but it's more typical for data frames to be very large. So it's convenient to have some shortcuts to look at just part of the data frame or to get information about the data frame without trying to look at the whole thing. There are two functions, the head and tail function that will just show you the beginning or the ending of the file. So if you use the head function, it'll show you the first six rows. If you use the tail function, it'll show you the last six rows. The function names will return just the column names. So if you have a CSV that has dozens of columns, this is an easy way to look at them without trying to scroll all the way across the uh, data frame. The str function describes the structure of the data frame. So it tells you not only the column names, but also what type of data is found in each of those col columns and additional information. Once I've read in a data frame, obviously I can go to the global environment, click on the name of the data frame and use the upper left pane to examine what is in the data frame in tabular form. However, if the table is very huge, it sometimes this is inconvenient. That's why using the head and tail uh, commands is a way to get a short look at either the first six lines or the last six lines of the table. If I execute the names function, it will give me just the names of the columns in the table. And the str function will give me not only the names of each of the columns, but will also tell me some information about what's in them as well. Although CSV files are quite common, there are other options one is to read in an Excel spreadsheet directly. There is a package called OpenXLSX, which has a function called read.slsx, and that can be used for opening files that are Excel files. You can also read files in as tibbles. This is a, a part of the readr package, one of the tidyverse packages. And you'll notice that the read CSV name of the function is quite similar, except it's read underscore CSV to read it in as a tipple, as opposed to read dot CSV, which reads it in as a standard data frame. One of the nice things about the readr package is that it provides a separate function called read underscore TSV that directly allows you to read in tab separated value files. So you don't have to specify specifically that the separator is a tab, you can just simply use the different function. I mentioned that there were a number of packages that were part of the tidyverse that involved tibbles. So this actually might not be a bad time to just go ahead and install tidyverse because then you will have access to all of these functions and not have to um, install a bunch of packages separately. If you don't uh, want to do that, you can just install the readr library. The readr library I believe has as one of its dependencies the tibbles 
package. And so when you install Redar, if you don't already have tibbles, you will have that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and load the Redar library. Now you can see here is the um, read.csv command, which will read uh, the file into a normal data frame. If I use read underscore CSV, it'll read it into a tibble instead. So I'm going to go ahead and run each one of these. So here is the uh, ERG data frame. If I run this one, I get ERG tipple, and they look close to the same. However, if I compare the table summaries, I can see that the regular data frame has read in two of the columns as factors. However, if I look at the details of the tibble, it shows me that the columns are read in as characters, not as factors. And you can also see that there's more information given about the tibble as well. For reference, even though we won't be using it, there is a write CSV command that you can test out. So if you read data, manipulate it in the data frame, and then want to write the data again, you can use write CSV. The other thing that you can do is read in tab separated values with a separate function. You don't have to um, specify what the character is that's being used as a separator. You can just use the read underscore TSV function.